What's going on YouTube? We have come off a weekend of Gen Con and Games Workshop was there in full force. But if you noticed a lot of their products they've uh, released or previewed at Gen Con are not targeted for you and I. They are targeted for a new audience. And this audience I would consider to be the general public. Um, these things are for getting people at like a Barnes and Noble bookstore to pick up or maybe a big box store. They're like little mini games. They're not a full on deep dive into the hobby, but they are a taste, right? A little taster. Um, this is, I believe, what X-Wing has done with their product that made it very, very successful and very popular. And we all know Games Workshop is a current and long time juggernaut of uh, tabletop gaming probably the biggest I think I don't know I think probably the biggest so that got me thinking um, massive massive success and super profitable company right now targeting the general public to get your average person to maybe pick up a box and be like hey what's this little football game oh it's Blood Bowl Blitz or whatever and think about it right and it's gonna put it in their head now the next step for that in my mind to be a mass appeal is like a Netflix series either a TV show probably not a movie but maybe a TV show and there's a lot of people especially with like Netflix and I think like uh, maybe Amazon Hulu crackle whatever uh, if you get the right people behind a project and all of a sudden they can be massive, massive uh, successes. Um, I don't have Netflix, but uh, I know there's like that show Orange is the New, ba Orange is the New Black or uh, Stranger Things or what other uh, uh, big shows that I've heard the name of that I've never seen. Now, what got me thinking about this is Games Workshop has put out quite a few videos in the past, like recent past, where they have actors and a lot of voice actors uh, previewing uh, products. Um, and they just, it seems to me if they're contacting these people, my thought is, I don't know, my thought is they are, some of this is almost like test footage test ground especially that one where that guy's like going to man his imperial night um, it's probably very expensive to do that just for the product itself and whether or not that sells more of the product I'm not a hundred percent sure they probably have a better idea of it based on views and clicks and whatnot but uh, if they got these actors I don't think they're giving Duncan ten thousand dollars and telling him to go hire uh, you know two voice actors to uh, play their, uh, you know, Primarchs for the next video. And also they've been appealing to, I believe, Geek and Sundry or BoardGameGeek.com, one of those, and having them teach you how to play Age of Sigmar. Um, so they're reaching, right, they're uh, the powerhouse in a small group, and now they're just expanding, right? They're trying to Hungry Hungry Hippo more people into their uh, business model or business plan or their hobby. And with all the massive success of, say, like a Netflix show, um, a show like, say, like a show like Breaking Bad or The Sopranos or Orange is the New Black or whatever show it is, uh, some of these shows have such a massive impact that everybody uh, talks about them and watches them more or less. Now, if you take Games Workshop, who's making a ton of extra money, and maybe they're going to expand into something, the biggest maybe bang for your buck, could be animated, could be live action, uh, would be having a successful TV show or Netflix movie that all of a sudden, say a million people play. I don't know what the numbers would be. Let's say a million people play actively you have Warhammer or Age of Sigmar 40k Age of Sigmar um, now all of a sudden let's say you have you know 5 million people watching your TV show 
if it's successful, right? It's a cool sci-fi show or a cool fantasy show. Huge, huge way to uh, get a lot of new eyeballs on your company, a lot of new people into your stores, and maybe a lot of new products uh, into people's hands. So, especially with the colored plastic that they've been using now, which I also don't think is a... Um, I don't think it's just like the evolution of the plastic. I think it is a purposeful tactic of trying to get new people into the game. You can play with the gold plastic guys. You can play with the red ones. You can play with the blue ones. You can play with the green ones. And that way the person, i.e. consumer, who's not interested in art or painting can then, uh, you know, they feel a little more like, oh, you know, I got to use the gold plastic guys I guess right so I think that just helps get a new person into the hobby so I want to know what you guys think about this um, they have contacts obviously with actors and voice actors they have special effects people they have massive profits right now they're gigantic uh, all their games are banging out on fall cylinders they have new products being just cranked out prices seem to be going up in which I would think there's still plenty of demand or else they wouldn't be able to raise their prices. Um, so next step is uh, the live action and or animated 40K and or Age of Sigmar movie slash TV show, show slash uh, mini series, right? A four part series, big hit on Netflix and you get like 100 million users potentially watching it big big potential there um, a lot of people have been focusing on the game running into the kind of esport territory of being streamed and viewed as like a sporting event or you know people are getting a lot of enjoyment out of watching uh, people play so that's another way to get you know a lot of attention on your uh, product so just some ideas about the future of Games Workshop, please subscribe. We do a lot of hobby videos, and uh, it's basically just me chit-chatting with you. So, adios.